In this video, I'll walk through how you can build your own powerful Wi-Fi pen testing device, the ESP32 Marauder. To follow along, you'll only need a few pieces of hardware and no soldering is required. I'll show you all of the steps and everything you need along the way. Let's hop over to the workbench and get started. If you want to follow along and build the Marauder yourself, there are a few pieces of hardware that you'll need, which I will quickly go over right now. The first one is an ESP32 dev kit, and more specifically, I'm using the ESP32 WROOM32. You'll also need a touchscreen display, so I'm using this 2.8 inch TFT touchscreen display. And on the back of it, it also has an SD card reader as well that we're going to be wiring up. To connect everything together and avoid needing to solder, I'm going to be using these two miniature breadboards. We will also need some female DuPont header pins. More specifically, we're going to need a row of 14 at the top and four at the bottom. So I was able to find these in six and eight sizes. So I'll put a six and an eight together for a 14 and another six at the bottom for the four. One quick thing to show with these is that they frequently come in this size with the smaller pins. So you'll notice here the pins are much smaller on this size. These will not fit into a breadboard board very well, so you'll want to make sure you get the ones with the longer pins. To wire everything up, we'll be using some of these jumper wires. You could also use a spool of wire and cut and strip it yourself, but I find it's much easier to use these pre-cut jumper wires. To power the ESP32 and also program it, I'll be using this USB micro cable. And then finally, this part is optional, but I'm going to be using a power bank here to power the ESP32 to make this device portable. So before we go ahead and connect everything together and wire it up, it's much easier to program the ESP32 with it outside of the device. So let's grab our ESP32 and our USB cable and we'll hop over to the computer and I'll show you how to program the firmware for the Marauder onto this. Before we continue with the video, a very important announcement. The Black Friday discounts at TCM are live now. From today until December 2nd, you can get 20% off all certification vouchers and 50% off your first payment to the Academy. In addition, we have some special never seen before bundles on sale and discounts for our two upcoming live trainings, the popular Attacking and Defending Active Directory and our brand new SOC Level 1 Live. Seats to these trainings fill up quickly, so if you're interested, make sure to act fast. If you've been thinking of taking a TCM certification like the PNPT, or upping your skills with the hundreds of hours of courses on the Academy, you won't want to miss out on the sale. To grab the firmware, I'm over at the GitHub repo for the ESP32 Marauder. So this is some open source firmware and also all of the hardware and designs even for 3D printing a case and everything has all been made open source by the creator of this project that's just call me Coco. So I just want to give a quick shout out and a big thank you for this awesome open source software. So we scroll down through the repo, there's a couple of resources we'll need here. So the very first one is we're going to need this old readme. So I'm going to open that up in a new tab. And then there's a couple things in the readme I will call out. So the very first one is if you are interested in learning more about the project, then I would definitely recommend checking out this wiki. You get some more details about the capabilities of the ESP32 Marauder as well. Also, if you are interested in buying a pre-assembled Marauder or you would like a kit, then you can get them through this link and that helps support the creator who has made this all open source. And then finally, we're going to need the latest release of the firmware. So I'll also open that up into a new tab. And then if we scroll down here, there is some update and install instructions. So I'm just gonna open those in a new tab as well. Perfect. And the one that we're going to be uh, setting up is the ESP32 Marauder V4. And the easiest way that I found to install this firmware is through this Spacehoon web updater. So what I'll do is I'll just link there right now. And the first thing we need to do is go to the web updater. So I'm gonna open that up in a new window so that we can look at them both at the same time here. And then the next thing we need to do is plug in our device. So if you haven't already, plug in your ESP32 to your computer, and then we'll click connect here. And mine shows up as the CP2102 USB to UART bridge controller. If you're using the same dev kit as me, then it will most likely show up as this, but it could also show up as an FTDI device or a CH340 or CH341. So we'll go here and I'll click connect. 
and then we'll just give it a second to connect. So if you're having any issues with yours connecting, I will just quickly call out this help here. You can go into this blog and there's some details about issues with connecting. And I'll call out the most likely thing is that you're missing your drivers for your serial to USB adapter that is on the dev board. Most likely it'll be this one, but it also could be one of these two. So go ahead and follow these instructions for how to install it. If you go to this one, it gives you the link here for the official drivers. So I'll just come back over here and now we can follow through these instructions. So all we need to do is we're doing this V4 ESP32 and we just need to download each one of these that are linked here. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded them. And then we also just need to double check and make sure these addresses match up. So for me, by default, they all did, but just go to double check. They all match up here. So mine all match. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go select here and then I will grab all of the different ones. So for this one, if I just look, it's the bootloader. So we'll grab this one here. And then the next one is the partition. So I'll grab the dots partitions here, open that up. Then the next one we need is the boot app. So I'll grab this boot app dot bin. And then finally, we're going to need the firmware. So just a quick heads up for the firmware. The one we're going to need is this underscore old underscore hardware dot bin. So that's the one I've downloaded. So we'll just go select here. I've got this underscore old hardware dot bin. Click open. Perfect. So at this point, everything's good to go. So we'll just click the program button here, click continue. And this is going to start uploading all of the firmware. This will take a couple minutes. So what I'll do is I'll just meet you over here when mine is done. Okay, mine's done flashing. So you notice down here at the bottom, it just gives us a heads up to run the firmware. Please reset your device. So at this point, you can unplug it from the computer and we're now ready to wire it up. So before we head over to wire it up, let's take a look at the wiring table. And that is located in the old readme here. And if we just scroll down, this is the old readme that I opened up in a new tab before. You'll notice there's a do it yourself section. So if you head there, you can get some more details about the hardware and how to wire all of this up. If we scroll down, there's a connections here. And this is just a wiring table that shows what we need to connect between uh, the touch screen and the SD card reader, which is actually also on our touch screen as well. So you may notice here though, if you look at your ESP32, it doesn't actually have labels like GPIO 17, GPIO 15, 16, etc. Uh, most of them are DI and then a number, and usually those will line up with the same GPIO, but some of them will say things like RX or TX, and those are also actually GPIO pins. So you may need to go and take a look at a pinout diagram for your board as well. So what I've gone out is just gone to Google and search for ESP32 WROOM32 dev kit pinout, and then this will show us which pins are the actual GPIO pins. Just make sure when you're looking at the picture that it actually matches the one for your dev kit. So we'll make sure it matches. For mine, I found this one from Last Minute Engineers that was pretty good. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna go here and we'll go open image in new tab. And now I've got a layout here so you can see the different GPIO. So for example, you'll see here, I've got like a TX2 and an RX2 and those line up to different GPIOs. So what I'll do is I'm gonna keep both of these open and I'm gonna hop over to the lab now and we can take a look at wiring this up. Now that we've got our firmware flashed, we're ready to wire everything up. So just in case you're not familiar with how a breadboard works, I will really quickly go over how the connections inside of this work. So on these breadboards, we have what are labeled as columns. So we've got five columns here, all these pins going down are each a column, another five here, and then we have the rows. On a breadboard, each of these rows of five are all electrically interconnected to each other. So if you put a component, for example, one end of a component in here or a wire, and then another one here, then they're actually going to be connected together. There isn't a connection over this gap here. So for example, if we put a component in here and we wanna have connectivity to this row here, then we need to put what's called a jumper wire from here to here. And we're going to be making advantage of that to wire this up. So we'll be putting one side of the ESP32 in these pins here, and then we'll be putting the pins for the display in here. And then we just need to add some jumpers in to wire everything up. So let's go ahead and plug the ESP32 in now. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'll plug it into this side of the breadboard here. And you'll notice that it fits with just one pin at the top and one pin at the bottom, not plugged in on the breadboard and we could do the exact same thing on this side as well here. So we'll just wire this one up now. Perfect. And then yours should look something like this. And now the next thing we're going to do 
is we're going to add in the headers for the display in the top and the bottom. And the easiest way to get that all lined up actually, I found is just to put the headers on the display and then plug the display in. You'll also wanna make sure you have your charging port on the right here so that the top of the display, so the end with the 14 pins lines up here because most of those actually connect to this side of the ESP32. So let's grab our display here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my header pins over it. So we'll do these ones first. So I got an eight here and a six here. Perfect. And then I got a four here. All right. And the way that this is going to work now is we're actually just going to fit this over it. So it fits, it actually will fit perfectly over these breadboards. So I'm just going to clip mine in. I'll show you here. I'm going to clip it. So on the top here, there'll be one space. And then on the left, there'll be two. Okay, perfect. So I've got mine plugged in. So I'll just show you. And there will be a little flex to it here, but this is all perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just hold onto these header pins and I'm going to pull the display out so we can have access to wire it. And then we'll know we have our header pins in the right spot. So when yours is done, you should have it looking like this. So now what we need to do is just add all of those jumper wires so that our connections from, for example, here go to the right one. So you may notice really quickly, if you look at your wiring guide, well, we have one that needs to go from VCC, which is 3.3 volts. And that is the furthest uh, rightmost pin of this display. So one way I like to look at it is since you know this is gonna flip over, if you hold them like this, then you'll see where they all go. So this one's VCC and this one's ground. So the first two wires we're going to need then is a jumper from here to here for that VCC and a jumper for here to here from that ground. And then you can see the rest of the pins here, they all need to be wired up. And then we'll also need to wire these ones as well on the bottom, just like this. So what I'll do is I'll show how to wire a couple of them and then I'll just wire the rest myself off camera and you'll need to follow along with that as well. Okay, so that's what it looks like there now to do those jumpers. So what you'll need to do is just consult the rest of the wiring guide and then do your jumpers. So just keep in mind that some of them won't be directly over. You'll need to um, cross over a few of them and some of them are actually gonna have to wrap around the side as well. So I'm gonna wire the rest of mine up now and I'll show you what it looks like when they're done. When you're done wiring yours up, it should look something like this. And what you may wanna do at this point is actually go back and just double check all of your connections. Make sure you didn't miss any and they're all going to the right spot. Once you are sure they're all right, now we can actually just go ahead and plug in our touchscreen display to these headers. So the reason we're actually using these headers is just so the SD card reader actually just fits over this ESP32 here. So I find it easier actually to go ahead and plug in the bottom one first. So that's what I'll do first here. Perfect. And then we'll just line up these ones here and plug these in as well. Perfect. So this is actually the top here with these four pins. And what we can do at this point is I've actually got my uh, USB cable plugged in on the other end to power and we can just plug this in and it should power up with the Marauder firmware and we'll see that starting up. Okay, perfect. That's launching. So we can just let this boot up and then I'll put this to the side here. So if you got it working to this point, then congratulations, you've got yours booted up with the Marauder firmware. The last assembly step I'm going to take is just to attach the Marauder to this power bank so that it can be portable. So on the back of these breadboards, there's actually adhesives for two-sided tape. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just peel these off and then stick them to this power bank and then we can just connect the cable in and have this be portable. So I'll just do that right now. I've got a shorter USB cable here and a couple zip ties and we can plug this in and get it tucked away nicely. So I'll just plug the one end in down here and then just to make sure it works, we can plug the other end in to the Marauder, perfect. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, cable these up and then zip tie them. There's a couple of holes here, mounting holes in the ESP32. So I'm just gonna zip tie the rest of this cable to those just to get it nicely uh, buttoned up for us.
perfect so we've now got a nice portable marauder here of course if we did want to solder all of these together and use a circuit board we can make it a lot more compact however without any soldering here we've now got a portable esp32 marauder now that we've got our marauder set up let's take a look at some of its capabilities the ESP32 Marauder has a lot of useful tools built in for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth testing. In this video, I'm just going to be showing two of the more popular Wi-Fi attacks. However, keep in mind there is a lot more functionality and testing tools if you did pick up this device or built one yourself. So the first attack we'll take a look at is a deauth attack. And what that's going to do is going to send out deauth packets to a set Wi-Fi network, and essentially that's going to kick all of the devices off of that network. So to do that, we'll go into Wi-Fi, and then the first thing we need to do is actually scan for all of the access points. So we'll do that under sniffers, and we'll go scan APs here. And we can see that we have some APs coming in through here. So what I'll do is I'll just let this run through until it picks up all of the access points. Perfect, and I see I've got one here called HackMe, which is a network that I set up for this testing. So we can go back and touch the screen to exit here. And now we can go back in and we can go to attacks and we're going to run a deauth flood. Before we run the attack, let's take a look on the computer where I am connected to that HackMe network that I set up. So since there's no internet, what I have done is I've just gone to the browser that the router hosts for setting it up so we can see how this is going to impact our connectivity. Before we run the deauth flood, we will need to select the access point to target from the list of access points that we previously scanned for. So I'll go ahead and run this deauth flood here. And we can see that it's starting to send some packets. And you can see that it, auto, it has kicked me off of the HackMe network here. And if I just try and refresh this, we can see that we can't get to that. And that's because we are running the deauth right now. So if I just touch this to exit here, we'll actually be able to go back in and connect to this network. And we can already see that it is reconnecting and it's going to be able to pick back up this website now that we've stopped the deauth. The next attack I'll demonstrate is the evil portal, which will allow us to create a evil captive portal, which if you're not familiar with those, that's when you connect to a Wi-Fi and it pops up in your browser, a page to enter a username and password to proceed. So we'll click here and we'll run this. So we're picking up the access point name here from the config file, which I'll demonstrate in a second. And it's called free Wi-Fi. So that's what I've named it. So we take a look at the computer actually, and we go down to the Wi-Fi networks here. I've got one called free Wi-Fi that I'm going to connect to. And you'll see that it redirects us to this portal here. And it's going to ask for a username and password. So what I'll do is I'll just put one in here. So I'll go test at test.com and just password and click continue. And you can see that it actually does nothing. But in the back end, we can actually see that it saved the username test at test.com and the password here. So what I'm gonna do is actually power this off and also show you how it logs this to the SD card and how it's set up. I've got the SD card loaded up on my computer here so we can take a look at some of the files required to configure the captive portal. So the first one is this ap.config.txt. And inside of that, we just put on one line the name of the SSID that we want to run the captive portal on. So for me, I just call it free Wi-Fi. You'll also need an index.html at the root of the SD card. And this is going to be the web page that the captive portal loads up. So I just created a quick one that asks for a username and password. However, it is possible to go out on the internet and find repositories of popular login pages from various companies and attackers will frequently use those to try and trick unsuspecting people who connect to the captive portal into putting in their accounts for those companies. You'll also notice that we have logs from the evil portal. So this is the one from the login that I just did. So if we click on that, we can see we get a text file here and it contains the username and the password that was harvested. And if we have more, they'll just be shown here. That wraps up this video. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, don't forget to like and subscribe.